Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video in my modelling masterclass series I'm going to show you how to sculpt candles. So here we've got a recent model that I've worked on which is my Caladus Assassin and I decided to make the base a little bit more grim, dark and gothic by adding in some candles. Now it's quite difficult to get hold of candles in plastic miniature form so I decided to scratch build some. So this tutorial is going to show you how I go about making them. If you're interested in seeing how I converted this and my other assassins, there'll be another video coming down the line. So make sure to subscribe to keep notified for when that video happens. So if I show you up close, you can just see these candles in a bit more detail. They'll be a bit easier to see once they've been fully painted. You can see they've got that kind of heavily melted and well used candle look. The base materials are just styrene rod, which is the same material that I showcased in my last video, which was on how to make spent shell casings. This time we need to use some slightly different thicknesses, and I'm going to vary it up with two different sizes, just so you get an assortment of different candle sizes. So the two sizes that I've got, I've got 2.5mm in diameter for the large candle, and then for the smaller one I've got 1.6mm. Now you can vary this around a little bit, but ultimately you probably don't want to go too much larger in size for the large candle, because then it will start to look a bit unrealistic. And lastly I've just got some copper wire, that's a 0.5mm in size, and I use this for two things, firstly for creating the wick, which could also represent the flame, and then lastly I use it for securing some of the candles to the base. Now you'll also need a knife, a pair of clippers, a flat nose plier, as well as some PVA glue, plastic glue and super glue. Now depending on your preferred method you'll also use some baby powder, as well as some green stuff, and to go alongside that green stuff you'll also need some sculpting tools. I've got a regular Games Workshop sculpting tool, as well as some silicone tipped brushes. Now taking the smaller styrene rod, we want to cut this into a bunch of different lengths to give us an assortment of size candles that we can use. So anywhere ranging from 0.2 to maybe 0.3 millimeters for a really burnt out candle, all the way up to about one centimeter for a brand new candle. I would suggest not going any higher than that because it doesn't look very realistic. I've got some flat edge clippers and I can just go away and start cutting some sizes. So what we we'll end up with is one very flat end which we can use as the base of a candle and then a rough cut which we can use for the very top part of the candle. So I want to cut these to a bunch of different lengths just to give us an assortment of different sizes. And then do a couple of long ones as well and that will probably be it for the small candle, so I'll just put that to one side. And now taking the larger styrene rod, I can now just repeat that method to create some more candles. Now we've got a nice arrangement of candle sizes, ranging from the thin size to the thick, and small to the tall. Now if you think you're going to be completing your candles in one session, what I would do is get a small scrap piece of paper or card, in this case I've got some spare foam core, and just apply your PVA glue to it. Now we'll be using the PVA glue to make the candles look more realistic and give them that melted wax look. Now as you can see the PVA glue is quite runny and wet at the moment and ideally what it needs to do is be slightly more dry and thicker. Now we can just let this sit out and dry ever so slightly while we're working on the candles so when we get round to finishing them off this should be all ready. I'll carry on with the method just concentrating on two of the candles just so you can see how it's done. What we first of all need to do is make sure that one side is very flat because that's going to be the base. As you can see this one's been cut an angle so I'm going to tidy that up with a knife and also just tidy this edge up as well just so it's as flat as possible because that will help when gluing it to the base. So now we can see the edges are a lot cleaner on the right hand side of each one. Next up we need to draw a hole for where the wick is going to go. So for this we just need to take a drill bit with a 1.5mm drill and drill into this left hand side which is going to be the top of the candle. So if I take the small one to start off with. So this one is now done. I've probably only gone down around 3 or 4 millimeters, which is just enough to secure the piece of copper which is going to go down that hole. So I'll repeat the process on this one. Ideally you want to get the hole as close as possible to the centre. If you do need a hand placing the centre you can just cut out a little bit and sort of make an indentation with your knife. Just be very careful not to stab yourself and this should now help guide the drill bit. 
So I've gone around about five millimeters deep. If you've got a very short piece of candle you're trying to make, such as one that's under five millimeters, you might as well drill the hole all the way through. So the next step is to sort out a very natural looking top to this piece. So sometimes I cut them at a complete slant all the way across. However, this one looks pretty good as it is in terms of the way the cut has happened where it's sort of slightly misaligned. But what I'm going to do now is just very carefully with a knife sort of dig out some of that inside so the candle wall isn't quite as thick. So I'm just gonna put the knife in the hole and then twist the rod around so it will just cut out some of the inner pieces and then what I can do is just cut down into it just to give it a bit more of a natural shape in terms of how the wax is going to melt down on maybe one side more than the other so I think that will do quite well for now you can see the hole in the middle still and then you've got a nice thin wall going all the way around the top and then I've just cut into this section to make it look like the wax is dripping down this side of the candle so for now we can just put this to one side and work on the smaller one. So this one is a bit ragged and a bit horrible. So what I'm gonna do is just give it a clean cut, cutting it at an angle, just like so. So with that clean cut made, it looks like the wax is just dripping down from one side. And then what I can do is just maybe cut the top of this bit off slightly, just because it's a bit too pointy. And I'm just going to drill out the hole a little bit more just to make sure that I haven't cut off too much of the candle. So I think there'll be enough space now for the wick to go in. And then again, I just want to dig out slightly the inner bit just to help thin that candle wall out. So the next step is to take your piece of copper and all we need to do is apply some glue to the end and then we can glue this in place just by locking it in there. So the copper that I have is on a spool. Now I find it's a lot easier to keep the wire on the spool because that actually just naturally holds it all for you. So you don't have to worry about holding this piece as securely as you would need to otherwise. So I just need to put a tiny bit of glue on the end, just like that, that's enough. And then I can add this on. Now you could leave this to dry for a few minutes, but to speed up the process, what I'm actually gonna do is clip this off with the cutter so I can then move on to the next piece of candle and repeat the process. I'm gonna cut mine around here for now. So it looks a bit like a stick of dynamite. What I can then do is put that to one side while that dries and then I can carry on with the next piece. So this time I've got my larger candle and then I can place that in and snip the wire. Now if you've got some excess glue like you can see here, you wanna come in with a toothpick just to try and clean up some of that glue because you don't want that middle bit to be filled out. I'm using a brass toothpick which is really handy because it's really easy to clean up though a normal wooden toothpick will do the job quite nicely as well. So I think I've cleaned out enough of a super glue. I'm just going to leave this to one side while that sets. So with that all complete, I've now got a nice little pile of candles. The majority of them have that copper wire inside to represent wicks. There's a couple that I decided not to put any in at all, purely because I want those to look really burnt out. Now also some, such as this large one here, has the wire going all the way through. In fact, in this case, it's just two bits of wire, one drilled in at the bottom and one at the top. The wire at the bottom is just for helping base it so I can have it sort of standing on its own without worrying about it getting knocked over because the contact point is too weak. For the majority of the candles, they're going to be either quite small or they're going to be glued up together in a little stack or up against a wall. So gluing those in in that manner gives them a lot of support, whereas some candles just standing on their own will need this kind of support added in. However, you can add in this basing support at a much later stage, just before you glue it down to the base, because that will help you compose the scene a little bit better. So the next step is to shorten the wicks to a reasonable length. So what I'm gonna do is just take my pliers and clip them quite close to the candle. I think something like that is perfectly fine. And then we want to take a pair of flat nose pliers so give it a squeeze in one direction and then turn it 90 degrees and give it a squeeze in the other direction so this will give it a nice little taper to represent a small flame 
if you want it to represent a wick I would cut it down a little bit shorter so let's do that with the next one so let's cut this one quite short and again go in with your pliers and just give it a small squeeze on the tip with that one tapered that one looked a bit more wick like than a candle and again it's all going to be down to how these are painted up to represent whether they've got a flame or not the last option is to use some green stuff to represent the flame so we can stylize that to represent a much larger flame that's glowing so for this what we want to do is keep some of that copper wire as an armature for the green stuff to mount onto for that we'll probably want to cut it down with just maybe three or four millimeters still sticking out which we can use to mount the green stuff on I've finished cutting all the wire to the right lengths. I've kept two with quite long lengths on the left hand side. These I'm going to use as armatures for mounting on some green stuff just to create a really large bloom candle effect. The ones in the middle have no basing support. These are the ones that are going to mount to the sides of things or to be clumped together where it will be quite more stable on the base. And then lastly I've done a bunch of ones with a wire support for the base. These ones I can sort of freestand wherever I want on the base and not worry about about the candles being knocked off during gameplay. So what I'm going to do is concentrate next on creating the green stuff bloom for these two just over here. So I've cut out two very small pieces of my green stuff and then you just need to start mixing them all together. So we've got the first half and then we've halved that second half. So hopefully this will now be small enough for the flame. I reckon it's probably going to be about right. So what I'm going to do is just mount this green stuff onto the armature. So that's a very rough shape. I've then got a silicone tipped tool which I can use for finalising the shape just to help smooth it off. What you need to do is just dip it in some water. So then I'm just going to carefully dab this all the way around just to try and smooth up that shape. Then what I can also do is just come in with a different tool tip uh, which has some different shapes just to try and help define that bottom bit a bit better. Now because this is still quite soft it hasn't quite stuck down to the candle yet. Now this will probably happen a bit later on once it's dry. I think I'm pretty happy with how it looks at this stage. It's got a decent candle shape, especially looking at it from this angle, and it seems to follow it reasonably well. It's probably not the smoothest it could possibly be, but I think at this size and the scale that you're working at, I think this is more than adequate. So this second one took no time at all. Now it probably needs a little bit more smoothing off, but what I'm gonna do is just let that green stuff set for a little bit longer and then I can go back in and try and smoothen it out. Again, you only need to do this kind of green slough method if you want a very large bright burning candle. If you want to do some slightly more realistic candles, I would stick to the brass copper method. It's going to be a lot simpler method because trying to make lots of these little green stuff ones will be quite time consuming. The next step is to stick the candles down to the base. I've already got my base here that I'm working on. This is for my Aversal Assassin. So just to give you some context in terms of how I've styled it up, I've created some paving slabs that I've broken up just using some plaster card and cut to various sizes and glued it down. Then I've just used the GW Skull Basing Kit to decorate the base with some skulls. So next up is just to place some candles around. For this technique, I'm just gonna mix and match up the candles to work out what looks best. For a lot of them, I'm gonna be using some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. This is just some very thin plastic glue which will help the candles stick down to the base. Because everything on here is made of plastic, as well as the styrene rod which makes up the candle, I can use the plastic cement and that will be a really good way of bonding the candles to the base. For the standalone one which I'll do at the front, I'll make sure I use one with the wire going all the way through just so I can secure that one a little bit better. So I think that uh, for my first candle will be a relatively good spot. So I can just take my plastic thin cement and just apply it around the base. And then I can just use a little tool to help put some pressure down to glue it in place. And you can see the bottom part melts into the base. That actually will help create a bit more of a candle effect. So I've got these two in a position where I'm also happy. So again, I take my plastic glue, identifying things like the candles that look good in clusters of three or odd numbers, so one on its own, or perhaps three like this. 
Now when it comes to ones that are actually this small, you could probably get away without using the wire going through the base. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to do it for this one anyway, just so it's got a bit more extra strength. So I just need to take my drill piece again and work out where I'm going to do the hole. Somewhere like that will be good and just drill it out. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. What I'll do is use the plastic glue, press that down. And once that one is set, what we can do is just look on the bottom. Then all we need to do is bend this wire over and we can secure that in place with some super glue. Now a really good method is to take some Johnson's baby powder available in the UK and what you want to do is mix it with some super glue. Now I'm just going to mix the baby powder in which will give some density to the super glue and it will help thicken it up. So here again I'm using my brass toothpick. So now you've got this really thick white paste, but it's not setting just yet. So it gives us enough time to work with it. So we just need to flip the base upside down and get a decent amount on your toothpick. And then you can just apply it onto the base. And then if I can get some more, I can just cover up that whole wire. You could just leave this to set. However, I've got a glue accelerator which sets it instantly. The one I've got is from Rocket Blaster. You can see that that has instantly set the glue. All the candles are now added on and you can see I've done quite a lot of them. If I just show you up close, you can see how I've batched some of them together. For example, this one and a couple of these, which are sort of out on their own. I've also done the wire basing method. That's just to help secure them in place, though by doing so all of these have ended up being glued together as well, which will be quite helpful. This one here looks a little odd because as you can see it doesn't go all the way down. However, the last method for finishing off the candles will hopefully seamlessly join that all together to the skulls. So I'm not too worried about how that one looks at the moment. Before I get on with the final step, I'm just going to do a basing method. That's just applying some texture to the smooth areas because effectively you want your rubble and dirt on the ground first and then you want your melted candles on top of it. Now I'm not going to go into the method in detail in this video. If you are interested though, I'll happily put together a separate tutorial video on the basing technique. As you can see here, I've completed the basing texture. So it just helps the base look a bit more realistic with some rubble and debris. But it will also help secure in your candles as well just by adding in some extra strength around the base. So if we just go back to the candles now for the final step, you can see that they look pretty realistic at the moment and will probably work from a distance, but we're still missing a few key elements. We're basically missing the melting dripping wax. So we're gonna add that on next, and this needs to be built up from several steps. If I bring in the original base on the left-hand side from the Calidus Assassin, you can see that those candles are a lot more softer around the edges and look a lot more realistic. So we're gonna carry on with that effect now. What you're going to need is to bring back your PVA glue. If you didn't do that step earlier, you can do it now. Just put some PVA glue down on a small bit of board. Ideally, you'd like it to air dry for about 30 minutes to an hour, so it starts to go a bit thicker. But if you haven't, that's not a problem. You can apply it straight to the model. Again, I'm going to use my brass toothpick. So we just want to pick up a small amount of the glue that will do for now so this candle just here you can see that the lowest point is on the right hand side so that's where the wax is going to be dripping down so we just start from about halfway up and then we drag the pick upwards which will help create a wax effect then we can also add some to the bottom because that will all be covered as well from the melting candle and then we just need to soften the top edge as well so really we want to go all the way around like so and any extra spillage that you've got you can just clean up lightly with the other side of your toothpick you can also go in with a brush that you've dabbed in water just to tidy the pva up in the places where it needs to make sure you give the brush a good clean because you don't want pva glue setting on the brush because that will ruin it now at the moment it looks quite overpowering but what will happen is that PVA will shrink back as it dries so it won't be anywhere near as noticeable.
so you can see already that it looks a lot more waxy and a lot more realistic which is just what we want as I mentioned before it's all going to shrink back as the PVA dries so you just need to let this set aside for an hour or two until that's complete and then we can go over it a few more times to get the finished result if you've got a couple more bases you can then put this to one side and crack on with the next one which is what I'll be doing so I'm going to leave this now for a couple of hours until it's completely dry and then we can come back and take a look at it. The first coat of PVA is now all dry and as you can see a lot of that PVA has shrunk back quite a bit so we're just going to have to build it up over a few more layers to get the desired effect. Now the PVA glue that I applied to try and help fill that gap has shrunk back quite a lot so I think it's going to be quite time consuming to just manually try and fill that in with PVA glue. So I'm going to experiment a little bit and I'm going to just thicken up some PVA glue with some baby powder and see how that looks once it's all dried out. So I've got a second bit of scrap material, just want to put some baby powder down on it like so and then I can add in PVA glue. I just want to mix this all together, try and get it all mixed in so it should start to thicken up. So it looks like it's thickened up quite nicely now. So now I'm just going to use that to try and fill in that gap. So the thicker stuff is slightly harder to kind of get the flow more naturally kind of going downwards. But actually it does look really good. I'm quite keen to see how it will appear once it's all dry. What I'm going to do is just go in with my brush just to clean up some of this just so it doesn't look like it's too overpowering on the model, just to knock it back, just so it looks like it's flowing in all the right places. So I've left the PVA mix for a couple of hours to fully dry out. And if we just look on the right hand side where I've done the mix with the baby powder, you can actually see that it's filled in that gap really nicely and actually has dried quite thickly. So I think this will probably be the better method going forwards just to complete the rest of the candles. If I just give it a gentle poke, you can see it is actually really solid. So I'm going to carry on with the process using that same baby powder and PVA glue mix because it's much thicker and will speed up the process. Otherwise I would probably have to do another two or three more layers to get the same effects which has only taken me one layer to do just here. So I'm pretty happy with this coating of the PVA. It definitely looks like a really sort of old shrine with the candles having been really heavily melted, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now it might be I still need to do just one more coat until I'm fully finished. But for now I'll just set this to one side to dry again, probably for around one to two hours and then we can come back and have a look. The next coat has fully dried and I have to say I'm really impressed with how the PVA and baby powder mix works in comparison to just using PVA on its own. It starts off a lot thicker and it retains a lot of its size and just doesn't shrink down anywhere near as much as the PVA glue just on its own. So if I bring the original model, the one on the left was made just using PVA glue. This took three to four coats just to get that slightly small effect Whereas the one on the right, it's only taken one coat to create a really old looking candle that's been well used. Whereas the ones on the left look slightly newer and retain a bit more of its original shape. So depending on how brand new you might want your candles to look, you might just want to go with the original PVA method. However, for its speed and for how it looks, I will definitely be using the PVA mixed with baby powder. So just looking at this one on its own, 
I think because of the baby powder mixture it has a slightly chalky finish to it it is quite minor and I don't think it will be too noticeable once it's painted but to be on the safe side I'm just going to give the candles an all over coat with the PVA so that should give it a really nice gloss finish. So once again I'm using my scrap bit of card I just want to pour out some PVA glue this time it's probably best if I just use an old brush that I'm not too worried about just put enough on the brush and then effectively I just want to paint onto all the candles just where that wax is going to be and in fact you could probably get away with thinning this down a little bit more So I think that's given it a good coat. Just need to clean up any excess where I've just dabbed it in the wrong place. And then just need to make sure I wash out that brush now with water before the PVA sets. So I've now left it to fully dry and here is the finished result. Just adding on that final layer of PVA glue really does help just because it helps it bring back some of that kind of glossy finish that you would expect a candle to be. So overall I am really happy with how this candle build has come about. So these candles are now all ready. It's just a matter of going off and painting them up. Remember I said you can even paint the copper wire as wicks or as small candle flames. I might do a mixture of both for this model, but I'll see how I feel when I get around to painting these up. Overall, I am really happy with this method and actually the baby powder mixed in with the PVA glue makes this method much more efficient and works a lot better than just using the PVA on its own. I've also still got the candles where the flame is made from green stuff. So as you can see, the one on the right hand side will give you a really large bloom flame effect, whereas the ones on the left using the copper wire give you a much smaller flame. Personally, I prefer the one on the left using the smaller flame. It sort of feels a bit more realistic. However, it's up to you which one you prefer. And lastly, I just wanted to show you the finished base with the model that's going on top of it. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's the Aversal Assassin. So you can see here how the scale looks for the candles in comparison to the model. And I think the candles do a pretty good job of being the right size and scale for the model. And just to remind you, here's what the original base looked like. And it's just showing you up close in detail how those candles all go together. This one just used several layers of PVA glue to create the wax effect. This one didn't use the PVA mixed with baby powder. I've also done a couple of other bases, again also using the PVA baby powder mix. And you can see up close just how well that kind of thicker mix using the baby powder actually works, creating those realistic melted candles. And if I just show you on the other side, you can see it also just over here. And then lastly, I also did that mix on the Cluxus Assassin. So just showing you up close how the candle looks. And then again, you can see it here on the other side. So that's the finished base and the end of this tutorial. I hope you found it informative as well as inspiring to give you ideas for how you could decorate your bases, but also you could use this for decorating your terrain or for any dioramas that you might want to work on. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, this is the second video in a new series called Miniature Modeling Masterclass, which will cover a variety of scratch building techniques. If there's anything else that you'd like to see me make and showcase how to make it, please let me know in the comments below. And one last quick shout out, if you haven't heard already, I'm involved in a fortnightly 40k podcast. It's called Lookout Sir with my good friends Dan and Joe. I'll make sure to put a link to the YouTube channel below, but you can also check it out on places like Spotify and iTunes. So if you are a regular listener to podcasts, please do check it out and let us know what you think. If you're interested in other conversion projects, painting tutorials or building guides, make sure you subscribe and click the bell notification for future updates. That's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.